Hi guys, how's it going? How's everybody doing? <clears throat> all right, so first of all, I have to say, uh, I have been battling with the lighting situation. I'm just going to get me some like professional lights or something. Um, yeah, super frustrating. Glare, you know, so I put this brown um, duck cloth down hoping that the white balance would work and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this is what happens when I try to make a video at night using just regular incandescent lighting. So I apologize, but I think they're actually, the minis are actually coming across uh, pretty well on, on screen. I'm going to have to leave a lot of them on the table though, <laughs> so that the lighting doesn't like look weird. Um, first of all, just a couple things, a little bit of housekeeping that I need to get off my chest. Uh, first of all, um, if I am very, very, very sorry to um, my customers who have made purchases from my live sale. Um, the last, it's been, it's been a good while ago now. Um, I just want to let you guys know that uh, I have been fighting tooth and nail with the post office. And I know that that sounds like I'm blaming the post office for my, you know, lack of getting things shipped or whatever. But I just want to tell you guys that I have had a request for the post office to come and pick up packages three days this week and they have not picked them up. They have not picked them up. I literally was in tears talking to the manager at the post office this morning and I finally got them to come and get these packages and I have, hopefully it's going to actually work, um, gotten set up on their, um, collection route. So they're going to have me as a business that they will stop every day to see if I have packages to go out. Because as it is right now, what I do is I go on their website and I request that they come pick up packages and I tell them where they are on my property. And what I've been doing is leaving them in a specific place where I feel like they're relatively safe from view of the street and nobody's going to come steal them and also safe from the weather. And for some reason, my mail carrier, uh, which I don't, we don't have a regular mail carrier. We've, we kind of have like a substitute all the time. Um, our mail regular guy quit anyways. <clears throat> so they just haven't been picking up these packages and I have just lost my mind because, you know, it's all of the stuff from the live sale, which I have to say is a lot. It's a lot. Um, and, and then all of the journals that people purchased. So the journals, as far as shipping on those, just be aware, you guys, like if you buy a journal from me, I do say three to five business days for shipping. And I'm really, really sorry about that. It's just that I can't, I don't want to make promises that I can't keep. And I'm not going to say that I will ship the next day. Um, up until recently, <laughs> um, I've not been able to, to commit to that. I just, um, I don't want to do shipping every single day. I have a lot of other stuff that I'm trying to get done and I'm not saying that it's not important because it is important. It's very important. And I'm the same way. Like if I buy something, I want to know that it's coming and I track it, you know, so I get it. I totally understand. Um, if you're feeling like, you know, I'm not shipping promptly and you know, you're probably right. Um, but it's because I have my packages picked up. Um, I'm not going to get into a big whiny thing about my state of health or anything, but I have a really, really bad hip and it's really difficult for me to carry a bunch of boxes into the post office. And they offer a service where they will come pick them up. And if I request that service and they just arbitrarily don't pick them up, 
um, it's really upsetting to me. And especially when I start getting emails from people asking me if I've shipped their stuff yet. So I'm apologizing on behalf of the USPS for them failing to pick up parcels three days this week, three times. <laughs> Anyways, but also please remember that I do say three to five business days for shipping. So I'm going to see how it goes for the next few days. And I have a couple orders that I'm going to pack up tonight. Um, we'll see if they actually start coming every day to see if I have parcels. And if that's the case, then I can increase, I can, I can lower my, my shipping to one to three business days. Okay. So I just want you to know, I don't, I feel you like I do. And I feel terrible that, you know, you pay for something, you pay good money for it. And, you know, it's being delayed or you feel like it's being delayed. Um, the live sale stuff um, is important. Absolutely. It's totally important. It's just that it's a huge undertaking for me physically to ship it. Okay. And so I actually hired somebody to help me with shipping for that. So that's why it took a little while for that to all get done. And I just thought I would just say this on a video because it's just easier than putting it in emails to everybody. Anyways. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay. So that being said, hopefully I can reduce my shipping time from, from three to five business days on Etsy to one to three business days on Etsy. So I'm going to actually try that with this run of minis and see how it goes there. It's not like it's hard to do. It's just, you know, anyways, they're not heavy or anything. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So let's get into these. <laughs> um, what was it? There was something that like totally inspired me about these and I can't even remember what it was, but I think it was, um, like the charms or something. I don't know, but I was like, it would be so cool to do a whole series of journals. That's just like all numbers, you know, just all different number things. And, um, you know, just so I can, I can use all of these grid papers and stuff and, um, some, some of the stamps that I have, and I've got some stencils too that I picked up um, real old. They're like these little brass stencils. Um, so yeah, so that's what I did. I didn't use any book pages necessarily in the journals, but I did do the covers collaged with a bunch of different, uh, like math book pages and ledger pages and stuff like that. And, oh, you know what it was? It was Tracy's, um, number, um, labels that inspired me. Duh. <laughs> I knew it was something like that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was her little labels that inspired me to do these because they're so awesome. Um, and I'm just addicted to Denison labels anyways, like I think a lot of us are. Um, so yeah, so that's, that was, that was the inspiration. But, um, so anyway, so these are, I thought these turned out super cute. I'm actually really happy with them and, um, totally not Christmassy at all. Right. Um, I'm not necessarily anti-Christmas. I just, um, you know, I don't know. I, f I feel like there's a lot of Christmas journals av available, right? So anyway, so each one's got a little pocket on the inside cover. And then I made a ton of these tags. Just, um, just more collage with the book pages and different ledgers and stuff. And then the little Denison labels. Did some stamping with some number stamps. Um, I think those are the Cavallini numbers. They're super cute. And then did some little tiny tags with a little stamping with a rusty uh, safety pin. And then this is just some cheesecloth on file folder. So I did a bunch of these. I took like five big file folders and just collaged all of them and then cut them all up into tags and then did some, some embellishing on them. And then so each journal is except for the Tim Holtz paper that I used on the outside of the signatures, all of the paper that I used in these is vintage paper, um, meaning more 20 or more years old. And a lot of it is ledger. 
Um, there's a bunch of these different like accounting uh, books that I took apart and then all kinds of different grid papers. This is just a, you know, just some lined paper, but it is, it's vintage. And then um, this is actually one of the newest things in here. This is a date book from 1999. So, um, but yeah, so it's all mostly just writing paper. And then, and then um, the tags that I included and some playing cards. Let me show them to you before I put them back in there. So I just pulled any like game cards or playing cards that just had numbers that weren't like traditional playing cards, right? So a lot of them, like this is a Crazy Eights game. And then um, this is the, what is it? Crook, I think. And then Flinch. So I pulled cards from all of those. And then I just printed out a whole bunch of other like ephemera type of things that I've got and <clears throat> that I've scanned and, and whatnot. So these little price tags, little price labels, and then the, uh, oh, I forget what that game is. Um, it's like not Kino, but something like that anyways. And then some bingo cards, some little bingo cards, another little sale tag, and then like a flash card. So, um, some of this, some of this I've had for quite a while, but anyways, um, and then the other side of the bag's got some other little cards. So these are bingo cards. Um, I forget what that game is. Um, and then this born, born's 1000 or something. Anyway, so if it had numbers like that and it wasn't just a traditional playing card, I pulled some. So anyways, um, then in the back, you're going to get one of these little calendars. This one is from 1910. And then a couple more of those collage tags. Okay. So there's three collage tags in each one of these little minis. <coughs> Sorry. And I'm sick. That's the other thing. Because I've been really sick. Um, I've been trying to just push through and work through it. But man, it's got me. Um... Anyways, and then a little charm on the front. So each one's got either a domino or one of these rummy, what is it, rummy cube, the game is called. Um, there's one that has a dice. Um, there's only one that has a dice on it um, <clears throat> because I didn't have that many dice left. But So you get either a rummy cube or a domino. These are really old dominoes. And then a number charm, okay, on ball chain. It's attached with a little, um, actually a, a large heavy-duty jump ring there. So you could add more to this if you wanted to. And then each one has a red button and an elastic closure, okay? So very similar. They're all very, very similar. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. I really am sick. Um... So yeah, so there's 18 of these all together, okay? And I just did them as one listing in my shop. These are very reasonably priced. I'm going to tell you, they are they are very reasonably priced. <clears throat> um, and then I wanted you to have some book pages that are pages that I used in these collages, right? Um, but I didn't want to put them in the journal because I didn't want to take away from the writing space. And they're minis, so, you know, I didn't want to fold them up either to stick them in pockets and stuff. Um, so I just put together a little pack that will come with each one of these little minis. So you're going to get four, um, uh, what, are you, what are these called? <laughs> Flashcards. And I thought this one would actually work really well as a writing board if you wanted to just use this as a writing board in your journal. And it would, you know, this would fit inside there real easily. So, and then um, just some other vintage uh, flashcards that I love and I've been hoarding. And then I got this, <laughs> got a whole bunch of these little ledgers. These were actually uh, from a doctor. I don't remember what city he was in. <coughs> sorry. I'm sorry, guys. 
I don't remember what city he's in, but, <clears throat> but this is all of his appointments <laughs> and all of them are, look at how tiny the writing is. Anyways, I just think they're super cool. Um, but then there's some of his accounting is in here too. So that's why I included these because the numbers and the accounting, plus they're cute little pages. And then this is a vintage antique actually. Um, I think this was a geometry book or something like that. Anyways, algebra maybe. And then this is another um, vintage math book that I love because the paper is really soft and kind of like aged around the edges. This one is just really, really old. Um, and then this one is, yeah, this one I think is geometry for sure, but it's got all those really cool, like, um, black and white, like, um, diagrams and stuff. So you get a few pages from that one and the ledger. And then <laughs> there's, I have this workbook, The the student's name was Beverly. And I think I got this book from, from Patty, actually. Um, but this is all her uh, math homework and stuff. And so it's all filled out. And you see her grades and stuff. But I just thought those are super cute. And I used a bunch of that in the collages for the journal covers, too. So you get this little pack with each journal. And then, uh, yeah. So I just did them as one listing. And so please just let me choose one for you. I know I'm going to have somebody say, hey, can I have that one with the dice? And so I guess I'm going to just say, yeah, the first person that asked for it can have the, the red dice because I, I shouldn't have even done it, right? I should have just put a domino on it um, because I don't want anybody to feel like they're losing out. But um, it is pretty cute. <coughs> um, anyways, I have a solution though, okay? Anyway, so yeah, if you want the red dice, just be the first one to ask for it and then you can have it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so let me just kind of move these. Oh, these are so cute. I should have made like 40 of them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let me just kind of move these to the perimeter because I have something else I want to show you guys. And you, sh you saw me working on some of these. Uh, oh, I've got threads everywhere. You saw me working on these charms um, on a video. I think it was a live stream. And <clears throat> I have gone to town on making charms. I've just been, I've just gone crazy. Um, so I actually picked up, there's a Dremel, like uh, for your Dremel tool, it's like a little, uh, like a drill press. So it's really cool. So you can attach your Dremel in it and then, um, you know, it's really easy to drill holes in things. So anyways, I have just created a ton of these charms and then I made book charms, book charm dangles. Okay. And so I put it on, this is my journal that I got from Tracy. It's actually a planner, but um, I wanted to put it on a book because it was suggested to me that I show it on a book. Um, <laughs> anyway, so it's not for the book. It's just for the charm that I'm actually trying to show you. So you can see there's just all kinds of different random little things in here. And um, each of these, I either drilled a hole in it and added a hook, an eye, a screw eye, or drilled a hole in it and added a jump ring or an eyelet or something. Like I altered every single one of these things in some way so that I could put it on this chain, except for the keys, I guess. Um, there's Scrabble tiles, there's buttons, some big buttons, some smaller buttons, some beads. Um, uh, what are those called? Poker chips. These are those little kids uh, dominoes and they're made, they're wood. So I cut them in half and then sand it all around the corners and stuff to make them smooth. It's a little um, spool of thread um, that I just made into a charm. And a couple of vintage keys. I've got these these brass letters. Or, yeah, bra these brass letters that um, were from, like, a printing press. And so I was able to actually drill a hole in those. 
and so I added one on one of at least one on each journal, and then a couple of old vintage keys, some of Tracy's little um, definition labels that I made into charms. There's another little bee. Um, so yeah, so these are um, these are pretty fun. I I really have a good time making those, and I think I'm you know depending on how these do. I will be making more of them and maybe making some in different sizes too. So that one that I just showed you is number one, I believe. This one, so I've got them on these cards so that they kind of stay, um, you know, where I want them. Um, so this is number two and it's primarily like a blue theme. And they're all, you know, I didn't count how many charms are on each one, but I tried to just fill them all up. Okay. So this one's number two, primarily blue. That first one was, was like a mixture of colors and stuff. It's, you know, like more random. Um, I'm going to seal these up as soon as I'm done with this. So that's number two. And then... This is number three. See, they're all kind of similar. They've all got, you know, some of the same kind of stuff. These dominoes are so cool. I've got to, to drill some more of those. I've got, like, a bunch more still. This is a little owl bead. Um, <clears throat> Scrabble tiles. There's some of those Tim Holtz um, letter dice. Another key. And then, oh, and I did all of these... Uh, these are like some um, semi-precious stone uh, fish beads. So I made them into charms with wire. Took apart some jewelry and stuff. This is uh, one of the number labels of Trace from Tracy's shop. And I just made it into a little charm. I just glue it onto heavy cardstock, cut them out, and then glue them individually onto heavy cardstock again. And then, you know, they get... They get pretty sturdy. These are real heavy. Um, oh, this is a dice from a casino. It's got like some kind of number on it right there. Anyway, so this is number three. And these are all listed individually in my shop. The, the, um, the bead charms. The journals are all one listing. Um, and then this one is number four. See how fun they are? There's just, I don't know. <laughs> I really had fun making them. And I hope you guys like them because I'd sure like to make more of them. But um, I used some of my, um, these are my charms that I've made, tiles I've made out of uh, postage stamps. There's a little kitty. This one's got a yellow dice. Mahjong tile. Little, um, oh, I had a bunch of uh, puzzles like state birds, state bird puzzles, and, and state animal puzzles. Um, this is just a little, I don't know, it's a little guy from a yearbook. Um, just very junky, junk journal-y, right? All just random things. And I've been collecting all of this stuff for a long time. And I'm just really attracted to it because I always think, that would be a cool charm, you know. Somehow that would be a really cool charm. So this one is a little bit different. It's got more metal charms on it. So it's got like one of those brass letters, um, a key. This is like from, this was an earring. Um, this this butterfly, metal butterfly. And then that's, a, I love those faceted beads. Um, a smaller domino, a brass number six, and a dice. And then there's a bunch of, like, small charms down here at the bottom. This is the bottom of the charm. And uh, so <clears throat> there's this large ring here. And this is just to kind of show you that you can add more charms to this. So if you get, you know, other charms down the road, there's plenty of room on this ring for you to add more stuff, right? So there's little pretty little sparkly beads and there's a little gear and key. Okay. So this is number five. There's nine altogether. So I'm almost done. <laughs> oh man, my voice is getting so scratchy. Um, 
you'll you'll see. I took I think there are six images of each term um in the listings, and this is number six. So I just love the way they sound, and um I don't know. They're just so they're just so fun, so random. <clears throat> There's a little little brown dice right there. This is one of those little frames that I like to do with a little picture of a flower in it. Uh, a little botanical thing. Um, some random wooden dice. There's a Tim Holtz charm right here. A little number charm. So just all kinds of good stuff. And wait, what number was this? Number six. <laughs> anyway, so there's another green one. This is number seven. Um, this is a wooden puzzle that I I drilled holes in and added a big jump ring onto them. So this one actually has Minnesota. This one is like a green theme. Okay, it's primarily green. All different greens. There's a pink a pink dice here, but it's got green dots. So, and then I used a brass letter G on here. So, there's a little, um, there's a little game, like a little guy from some game, I don't remember. Um, some little tiny poker chips, too. And then some of those big, fun beads with the, you know, faceted gemstone things on them. Um, and then this is one that was, like, a red theme. So this one's got, this one happens to have Nevada, and then like a red poker chip, and of course, you know, Nevada's, you know, Las Vegas, right? So there's, uh, I had to use a casino dice, and then, yeah, so this one is the red one, and this one is number seven. This one is actually number eight, that green one is number eight, this is number seven, and then this one is kind of like yellows and oranges. So this one is number nine. And so it's got, a, it's got like a big yellow button. Um, I used some of my paper beads that I made like years ago and made them into some charms. It's got Y for yellow. Um, and then, you know, just all kinds of fun stuff. So I, just, I don't know. I just really think these are cool. And they're super, super fun to make. So, <laughs> like I said, I hope you guys like them because I'd really like to make a ton more. So, but like I said, I want to try to do some smaller ones too. Like that, you know, you could actually use as like a zipper pull or on a keychain. Um, or like on a piece of luggage or, or whatever. Or even just on a smaller book. Um, just for fun, you know? So anyways, I just wanted to show you guys this stuff because I just put it all in my shop and I did want to talk to you about the shipping thing and offer my apologies. And I just don't want to sound like I'm trying to cop out on anything or whatever, as far as the shipping thing. Um, it's just been a terrible week. Just let me put it that way. Um, I don't think the, the guy at the post office ever wants to talk to me again. Let's put it that way. Matter of fact, he said, I don't want to ever have this conversation with you again. So let's hope he means it. <clears throat> Anyways, I love you guys. And, um, I will see you very soon. Okay. Bye for now. <laughs>